but yeah we'll be talking about communities in the open and uh, building uh, open source communities how's the journey been and uh, uh, what's the recipe to build a good open source community uh, before that i'll quickly introduce myself my name is prithvi raj i've been working as a community manager for the last four and a half years i've been leading uh, the litmus chaos project as a community manager and i'm also a cncf ambassador and i've been working closely with a lot of cloud native events including kubernetes community days and we built a great event for chaos engineering in terms of chaos carnival moving on let's uh, talk about the agenda in hand will be defining what a community is uh, breaking down the community into different aspects of, of the community we'll talk about the process of building a community we'll take a case of the litmus chaos community how the journey has been with litmus chaos and what's the story been like and then we'll be covering a little bit of the challenges that uh, today we uh, face in terms of building a community and then we'll also talk about what's next for litmus chaos as a community and how you can contribute so how do we define a community or what exactly a community is i mean we, we have seven eight people in the room but that's a community in itself so i mean community is you people community is me community is everyone who's participating in the project or is a potential to take part in the in the project itself it it can be a user it can be a contributor it can be just someone who's trying to figure out what's happening in the project or over, uh, the overall ecosystem or it can be someone who's just trying to learn from from the tool itself or from the project and its uh, core contributors or core group of members so as as you can see i mean i should have uh, put this image first but we we in itself are the community so here are some community aspects which define a community or which help build a community uh, you you start with feedback obviously it's very important to have a feedback system between the core group of members who are building the project and the larger community that's trying to use the project or that's just trying to get involved uh, metrics very important you need to measure uh, community success with uh, certain metrics you cannot define community success if you do not have metrics in place you need to analyze how your community is performing what initiatives you are taking and how uh, your community is progressing day by day and what exactly you are achieving out of it content obviously content is king in in my opinion if you are able to uh, deliver content from the community if you are able to put down what your community is achieving or working on then that that uh, solely helps drive uh, a lot of members to the community or a lot of traction itself integrations and partnerships it's very important for a community to partner with other communities that is out there because i believe uh, the larger ecosystem has a lot of potential and uh, obviously once you are integrating with other projects there is a lot of development with the tool itself once you are partnering with other communities you are able to uh, gauge traction you are able to understand better of the overall ecosystem let's say kubernetes itself if kubernetes wouldn't have uh, collaborated with other communities in the open or collaborated with other uh, closed source projects as well i don't think kubernetes in itself would have become such a big community but uh in the end today a lot of projects are collaborating with kubernetes the kubernetes community or they are becoming part of the community partnering with other communities that are built out of kubernetes so again an essential part is integrations and partnerships will be covering that in detail from the litmus aspect as well community meetings and events i mean these kind of events community meetings help you understand what the community wants you are able to create a platform where you listen out to the community it's not just on on social media or slack but you are also able to talk to them one on one you know curate talks uh, join maybe uh, participate in booths or just engage with people and understand what they are looking for from the project what they want how you can deliver what's required so again community meetings uh, have been pretty essential from uh, the litmus aspect as well and we'll we'll be talking about in detail how we have divided meetings and events for the for the project roadmap uh, pretty important uh, if you need to deliver 
community success you need to have a road map in place what are the initiatives you are looking forward to take in a particular uh, month or quarter or a particular year how do you want to deliver for the community what uh, aspects of the community or metrics you are track, uh, trying to track so delivering obviously involves creating a road map at first and then moving towards delivering mentorship i think uh, the open source community's future has been the students in itself uh, today due to the business challenges due to the lack of uh, time that developers have faced or companies pulling out sponsorships towards uh, open source projects i believe mentorship programs and the student communities initiatives towards uh, contributing to open source has been vital and that has clearly help bring in new maintainers to the projects new contributors and help the project move ahead lastly i feel that every aspect of uh, community get some traction through social media uh, platforms like twitter linkedin discord slack youtube have really helped uh, community uh, come to the forefront or uh, deliver what what exactly community is all about uh, talk about new things maybe new challenges create uh, uh, new initiatives uh, for the community so yeah social media is p- perhaps the most important aspect i would say but yeah that, that's why i spoke about it in the last so let's uh, see how this process work what's uh, been the process for building the community or how uh, community building has been a, a constant process which goes on the first step is obviously identify the ecosystem and your target audience who exactly is going to be the interest group where exactly is uh, you know your target audience who does the community cater to and then you identify the need through the community i mean you talk to people who who are a part of the ecosystem let's say in the cloud native space itself you want to launch a, pro- a project or a product you need to talk to the people who are your stakeholders or basically your community status quo you also need to identify competition uh, who who are the competitors in this space how are they functioning what's their community like how you can make your community better and then you start with the road map as we spoke about uh, when to launch the community how the project road map should look like uh, when to you know go about launching community initiatives and tracking your your goals in itself so you need to have your monthly goals your quarterly goals your annual goals and then launch your initiatives and track metrics accordingly and it's very important to invite users from other communities it can be your competitors or it can be communities that are not really related to you but overall part of the larger ecosystem so if you talk about a project or a product based on reliability engineering or slo management it in the end it belongs to the you know larger devops community or the cloud native community and it's very vital you involve these people in your community and get feedback from them lastly as i mentioned uh, starting monthly and quarterly community meetings that i believe that they are the most important aspect of uh, running a community they help educate and nurture the community and obviously bring back some feedback and how the community is performing so we'll uh, start with the litmus chaos story uh, this is how i have been working for the last four and a half years and helped uh, build a very popular community and i think this is obviously a good example for other people who are uh, aspiring to build new communities in the open those who are wanting to develop their communities further so i believe litmus chaos can be an example to them so uh, just uh, introducing litmus a little it's an open source project based on cloud native chaos engineering uh, maybe uh, sai and namq are sitting here are delivering talks on chaos engineering uh, later today and on the third day as well so you'll learn more about chaos engineering but yeah it's it's a very popular project uh, hopefully will graduate soon we have already applied for graduation and we are almost on 3.11 and it it has seen uh, immense uh, usage grows 30 million plus docker pulls 2.5 million plus installations used by uh, user adopted by so many companies around the world and uh, obviously now it's an incubate cncf incubating project so how did it start back in 2017 2018 i think back when i was in college itself 
absolutely nothing it was just started as a side project to run some production level tests chaos tests for a project called open ebs based on cloud native storage and then uh, sooner sooner or later we were able to build a project which which has such a massive community that it became a company in itself and then obviously harness acquiring that primary sponsor chaos native now has become a primary sponsor to litmus and it has got a massive community of around Five seven thousand members overall, uh, two point five thousand members Slack community, and uh, beyond that, the chaos engineering community in the CNCF ecosystem. So the first step was obviously identifying competition. Uh, you see, Litmus is in between, but then there's so much competition in the chaos engineering space itself. There are CNCF backed uh, projects in Chaos Mesh, Chaos Blade, Kraken. Uh, which are again sponsored by great companies, Red Hat, Pink Cap, uh, commercial tools, Gremlin, Steadybit have been great commercial tools. They have again changed the reliability space in a different way. And then cloud providers as well, AWS, FIS, or you say Azure Chaos Studio, even they have played a vital role in making uh, chaos engineering, uh, you know, cross the chasm of early stage adoption and today I think chaos engineering has reached late stage adop adoption where a lot of people, a lot of companies, enterprises and even developers beyond SREs and QA engineers are focusing on adopting resiliency as a practice. So the first step obviously for Litmus was to identify this competition and understand what better they are doing or what can be done better in terms of building a community. And obviously being open source has had its advantage over commercial tools where the first step that the community is looking at is, you know, adopt an open source solution and then see if it's uh, something that can be adopted at an enterprise level or you can build a tool out of the open source solution itself. And then obviously run the Slack community accordingly. I, I believe that Slack has been one of the major platforms to, to run uh, you know, a community in the open or at least in the cloud native space and it's been a, a core platform for communication between the core maintainers, the founders of the project, the core contributors and other community members as well. Initially it started off with people from the sponsor community who were only driving the communication but today the community has been so successful that uh, people who are just joining in people who have started contributing are contributing back in terms of answering questions creating new issues and making it more sustainable in terms of nurturing the growth or measuring the metrics and becoming the you know initial resources who can who can help people who are using the tool to uh, you know get more support or just uh, get started with the project and then this is how we have measured uh, our, our Slack response. So you see these couple of pie charts is the, f the first one uh, answers how much time have we taken to answer a question or how, how much time has been taken by any contributor or maintainer to respond. And then how much time has been taken to close that particular thread. So we have taken a sample set of 40 threads, 40 Slack threads, and we have defined the process as the first step, obviously the question being asked on Slack. We define the user, is it a contributor, is it a user, is it a new joinee who's, who's just getting started with the project or in, interested in contributing to any open source project out there. We describe the issue, what exactly the issue looks like. They are bucketed in different forms and then the response starts as a, as a community leader obviously I'm the first person who responds to most of the threads or tries to at least get someone uh, to respond to the thread from the internal core group or uh, external members who are participating in the community we, rec we record these responses and then we we calculate the time that has been taken to you know start the thread close the thread and in between whatever has been discussed can come back as a feedback to the community or can come back as as a learning or creating a new issue for the community in itself. So it's very important to record your Slack responses to identify the users, which company they belong to, which ecosystem is using the tool and how, how easily you can uh, you know, resolve Slack threads, what can be automated. I feel that uh, Slack communities which are being run individually and are not part of other workspaces can automate these processes with a Slack bot or uh, maybe there are new LLM methods, AI methods that are coming in to uh, record Slack responses as well. So as I spoke about, content obviously is uh, the main thing that drives a community. You need to have uh, your content out there. You can do a lot of work, but 
again eventually that's not going to uh, be recognized if it's not out there if it's not available for people to look at or study so we used uh, these mediums obviously dev.2 youtube and medium to record uh, content in itself and i think uh, if if you have been following what litmus chaos has been doing or a few communities then dev.2 again has been a very popular platform although we moved a lot of our blogs and recent news to the cncf platform but you see we created a uh, Uh, hashtag on uh, dev dot two called hashtag litmus chaos. Anyone basically making the content side of it open source as well. So anyone who's contributing can basically uh, just uh, use the hashtag litmus chaos and contribute a blog. Or, and we we also have uh, become a community there. So in case there's any kind of spam contribution or any kind of negative contribution that again gets uh, you know. nullified by the process that dev.2 follows of reviewing the blogs and taking care of it but again this process is also some somewhat open source where people who are contributing a part of the project can come in and contribute a blog to litmus chaos and say the same goes with the cncf platform in itself uh, if you are wanting to contribute anything around litmus chaos you can just contribute a blog to the cncf the cncf blog team goes through the process and then they are Uh, publishing the article on its page and it gets added to the litmus project on the cncf platform itself so here's uh, the list of tutorials that we created i think this was the first step we took 4 years ago you start with the tutorials you create a playlist on youtube and you launch it with you know trying to define an introduction to the project define the architecture a get started guide define each and every component to the project and these are the tutorials which uh, you know get immense value or help the community get started with the project this is a playlist that we created and we've uh, added a lot more uh, beyond that maybe uh, in the recent times because the project has uh, grown so much or shifted we have focused a lot more on the docs but again uh, tutorials building use cases trying to help the community get started is the most important thing and i feel that creating a tutorial playlist uh, helps in that process so we'll be talking about some major uh, community building steps uh, how you can get started building a community how we have uh, basically enabled the community to get started and also some important collaborations community events and and processes that have helped the community uh, flourish in 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 its true sense so the first aspect obviously is cncf as a platform cncf obviously as a platform has been uh, pretty vital or essential in in bringing in new collaborations other projects people uh, projects that are coming to the sandbox level or the incubating level and projects that are you know trying to graduate or are already graduated projects and can help uh, the projects that are below them i think cncf has been a very vital platform and litmus if it wouldn't have been a cncf project i'm sure it would have grown it would have become very popular project because of uh, the growth of chaos engineering but i think it this uh, ecosystem has obviously helped people to identify the project to understand why litmus is more important than maybe other open source projects that are not part of the cncf and then obviously has given it a platform to come here deliver talks maybe create a booth write blogs and create more content so here are some integrations that we have worked around with litmus these are again we you see some popular cncf projects as well orgo captain cube word pravega streamzy uh, and again some cncf members as well in spinnaker cube sphere octeto so i think integrations have helped you know create a congregation of different projects or you know just reach one help the, uh, one project reach the other community let's say octeto it's just a developer platform and then people understanding the value of chaos engineering or kept in helping uh, you know the idea of chaos engineering alongside slo management coming out to the community or helping create uh, you know some sort of an architectural uh, plan for for people who are trying to build better ci cd or devops processes better resiliency in 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 their ecosystems so these are certain examples orgo we have been able to create workflows using the orgo project uh, we have been able to devise uh, you know some sort of methodology where uh, why we are integrating you know chaos engineering in 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 the sense of orgo workflows so these kind of integrations i think have helped the project become what has it has become today and 
other communities have recognized litmus in itself and i believe that whatever your project you are trying to run trying to build you need to identify the communities that you are going to partner with or integrate to and and i think that's the way forward for any project becoming popular in the overall ecosystem and this is how our community meetings uh, cadence looks like uh, although we are yet to start with our maintainer meetings but this is what you should follow if you are trying to build a community you need to have your community meetings that should happen hopefully once a month or at least uh, once in two months and then you also need to have a different meeting for your contributors because uh, in our community meetings we try to discuss user stories how the community is functioning what is uh, what exactly is happening in the community or what's new for the community and contributor meetings are specific to contributions you know creating new issues or fixing new issues what exactly the contributors have contributed to or can contribute to and lastly maintainer meetings are are aimed at helping maintainers come together because you know with time maintainers become busy or there is some voting process that is required or it's essential to identify which maintainer is active or inactive in the community so maintainer meetings again help you know the overall running for for the community so this is one of the user stories uh, this is by adidas uh, there are so many other user stories that are out there but i'll i'll speak about the uh, essentiality of user stories one is from the open source aspect and the second is obviously from the closed source aspect as well so from the open source aspect obviously uh, user stories help identify the importance of a, of a project or how the project is being used by top companies out there say this kind of a story comes out people you know believe in in the project more there's a, there's a sense of trust that comes in the project and also this helps identify how the community is using let's say adidas obviously a top e-commerce sport apparel brand uh, not just e-commerce but they have obviously outlets around the world and them trying to practice chaos in itself for the resiliency helps other you know giants in terms of you know not just the e-commerce industry but other industries who are who are part of the ecosystem identify the need for chaos and they see this as 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 a certain case study or a or a use case and then this is how other companies start using chaos as well or start using the tool as well and similarly from the end user side of things let's say uh, a company is sponsoring an open source project and then there are you know probable customers who are wanting to understand how it's being used and you know in 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 the open world we have understood that it's very hard to get you know legal uh, i mean legal proceedings or you just get get uh, you know the company to sign up that yes we are wanting to do a case study about our usage of the tool this is where open source stories become you know a, a sense of validation that yes okay this tool is being built on the open source tool litmus uh, say so for example i'll just take the example of the chaos engineering product that's being built on litmus and this is the story that's been done and that obviously becomes a validation or verification for potential customers or clients or people who are, who are wanting to use the tool uh, in, in in itself so this is one of the programs that we have run uh, this is uh, uh, an initiative of you know just like docker captains or cncf ambassadors this is an ambassadorship uh, which we did with litmus which we have called the litmus leaders program where uh, you know we have incentivized a few people in the past for for contributing to litmus or becoming you know top contributors to to litmus or contributing in some form and this is one of the you know the contributor zakram he is from france again a shout out to him for contributing to litmus and and becoming a champion for the community around the globe by delivering talks or participating in in the community in terms of issue fixing or contributing a pr and as i spoke about uh, the mentorship programs why it's important to involve the community or students obviously uh, over the last 4 uh, years we have run around 10 plus mentorship programs with lfx with gsoc outreach to to enable students from around the world contribute also maintaining diversity obviously from different countries we have had uh, re different uh, representation as well 
and we have welcomed a lot of mentees who have again become you know popular contributors or who have gone back in in their personal space and become successful as as you know creators contributors or you know just uh, in 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 their careers itself and i think one example obviously th these are the l uh, latest con uh, lfx mentees that we have had we have welcomed them in this uh, uh, spring uh, edition itself of 2024 and they are uh, currently contributing to the project again a shout out to them and uh, in itself we have one of our uh, mentees who has now become a mentor and a maintainer to the project he's, he's sitting with us nam q he started off uh, uh, around uh, last year as a as a mentee and then uh, from from uh, he's in college itself and then he contributed to the project finished the mentorship program and then obviously wrote a blog on it spoke about it and then kept contributing to the project and eventually became a maintainer and now he is leading a mentorship program in south korea which is uh, i think uh, os uh, os contribution academy south korea with 20 mentees under him so these kind of uh, success stories actually help build a, a community in itself and then also automates the process of not just depending on on the parent sponsor company but or other companies but also on you know the larger community who are students or who are just getting started with open source as as their journey so moving on we'll just uh, speak about the importance of events the project cannot just be run uh, with you know community meetings or community initiatives but there are events that have helped uh, build build you know each project for argo there's argo con grpc grpc con or there's you know the, the captain community has participated in slo con so each and every project in, uh, itself should be aiming to have their own project conference or participate in a larger technology conference in itself and the litmus community has helped build two conferences now it was one until uh, you know earlier this year which was chaos carnival which has run for the last four years and speaks about chaos engineering and has also invited the overall ecosystem in terms of other open source projects or end users but now we are going to organize our first litmus chaos con on uh, september 12th and this is going to be completely project specific and it's being obviously held by the cncf so and and, and it has become a community uh, conference in itself and that's the aim each and every uh, you know project should have or obviously believe that in the end running a conference can help gauge more traction bring in more participation and more user stories can come out to people and what's the process behind it how do we achieve that obviously participating more you need to participate in various conferences we as a community participated in cube cons delivered talks every each and every cube con the comp not just the company but the community in itself has focused a lot on submitting talks each and every cube con we have submitted 15 20 cfps it's it's so hard to get a cfp accepted in, in let's say a cube con north america or cube con europe and you need to be out there participate with the community summit talks you need to participate with other community members who are running meetups or who are driving podcasts webinars to go out there and talk about your project to make your project popular participate more and ensure that you know in the end you get the 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 amount of traction or the amount of uh, recognition that you have been looking for and yeah i mean alongside attracting participation and you know traction and everything there's also it's it's very important to attract contributors it's very important to bring in new contributions to the project or ensure that there's you know a certain level of contribution that's happening that helps the project health and for that we have obviously participated in hacktober fest over the years but also we have started participating in contrib fest which is being run by the cncf at kubecons to, to just ensure that you know there's some sort of a hackathon happening or some sort of a contribution that takes place on the particular day or you get enough PRs or some some sort of issue closing that that takes place to help the the project you know scrub some issues bring some new contributions or make some new contributor champions coming in to the community so I think we have five, five minutes on the clock and we'll be uh, discussing a few more community initiatives that have helped uh, the community grow. And one of them obviously 
I think a lot of companies uh, are participating in community building through creating meetup groups. Uh, and one of the popular examples I would like to take, obviously, has been Kong. Uh, I know them closely, and they have they have created a, a beautiful community uh, meetup group where you know there are sub meetup groups around the globe. So let's say the the parent group is obviously the Kong meetup group, and similarly, it's for us it's the Chaos Engineering meetup group, and then there are sub meetup groups created in different countries, say one for India, one for the US, one in the United Kingdom, and other countries in itself where you are able to you know gauge participation from different countries or different uh, communities in itself participate in the larger technology there there's more awareness that is created about the tool in itself and then obviously you can you can also gain community participation through the process so i believe beyond community meetings it's very important to create a larger technology meetup group you also need to divide them perhaps in subgroups and and build through it and that's how we built this chaos engineering meetup group which is almost uh, touching 2500 members and we've, we've done around 40 plus meetups we do one ho uh, hopefully in every quarter which which obviously gets a, a lot of traction in terms of new members or new students coming in to participate in the project so I think uh, this is uh, one of the last slides on the important contributions, the impact of social media. Obviously, we're running the right initiatives, getting people to talk about your tool, tweet about your tool. And I think one of these talks, they, 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 they just come organically. You don't even know where your community is. You don't even know how many people are participating and submitting talks for you or taking a look at the content that has been created by some member of the community, someone absolutely random in the community and that's been the power or impact that social media has had over the last few years and i believe that as, as a community manager as someone who's running communities that particular person needs to find uh, social media as an essential aspect of community building so in conclusion uh, as, as i spoke about the last few minutes how how we you know build a community or how we basically create steps for the community of of course you need to involve teams involve people of the ecosystem uh, involving your internal developers absolutely vital you need to involve your internal developers who are you know going to contribute or become future maintainers you work with the developers and developer advocates for charting out a content roadmap you work on creating more blogs articles and writing them and then obviously you announce, uh, you know, initiatives, say a community meeting, a webinar, an online meetup group, a technology group, whatever you're doing, and that helps you build. So the building process starts from there. Yeah, obviously, as I spoke about, Slack and meetup groups is the backbone. So you need to incentivize your community, send them swags, create ambassadorship program, certification, and that can help bring people to the slack or the community in itself you need to chart your metrics analyze what's happening how many you know people are actually maybe use google analytics or scarf or the other tools that are out there to identify how many people are signing up how many people are perhaps looking at your newsletters how many people are joining in the slack how is you know each community initiative impacting your community and then obviously just chart your community calendar accordingly when to organize what how often you should organize something and how often you should participate in a in a community event so lastly, I'll also talk about challenges. Open source isn't easy. There are so many challenges that are out there and why open source community is perhaps suffering today or not getting the traction that it deserves or that was thought of, say, five years ago. And this is, I mean, just the four challenges in, in my opinion. People have seen that priorities are changing. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, focus that's happening on open source a lot of people are believing that open source is not helping make money or how do we actually contribute to it we need to build our product we need to focus more on the enterprise side of things there are business challenges as well with the changing landscape uh, people are you know more sales driven and there's there, there's a lack of support that open source has seen over the last couple of years and that's why people are focusing more on more resources or their developers on building the tool and that has not really helped open source grow and then obviously you know people believe that we are getting this tool or we are getting this technology for free why do we need to you know 
uh, buy something and that is why people are moving away from the idea or the you know the belief in open source and then obviously uh, there is uh, a lack of platforms as well i feel that open source which is growing in 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 in, in some sense has you know lost a level of platforms a lot of conferences uh, have become more about uh, you know sponsorships or other companies just talking about closed source projects so that has not helped or there are a lot of conferences which have not been able to grow in terms of their exponential popularity and that's why you know they have stopped working on on open source or they have stopped building the idea of open source itself and the last major factor is loss of contributors i feel that with the chain all these three factors that's priorities challenges and platforms contributors have stopped you know focusing on open source and maybe they have you know focused more on their you know individual trajectories particular career paths a project has lost contributors maybe due to the overall ecosystem there is no focus from maintainers or contributors and again that has not helped build uh, new contributions or get in new contributors or nurture the existing contributors who once came in as uh, you know amateurs or just mentees for the project so what's the upcoming goals what's uh, next for litmus and the overall community i think this is something that you know a community that has become somewhat popular and somewhat has achieved certain sense of community success needs to look at we're looking to obviously publish a security audit security has been a very important aspect and hopefully it gets published by next week there's a docs analysis that is happening with the help of a cncf so obviously we want to get the docs in place and uh, analyze how our docs are work with the larger team our community conference obviously happening on september 12th hopefully we can make it a success we are looking to publish a new community road map and publish community case studies alongside litmus chaos uh, again is participating at kubecon with a booth and with uh, a project uh, a project meeting as well and then obviously we are looking to create a community charter work on new contrib fest and a new certification program which can help more community folks to just learn and contribute back to the project so here is a qr you can scan to register for litmus chaos con uh, it's uh, you know it's free to participate it's just like a you know another cncf conference happening uh, fully virtual the agenda is announced and there are a lot of people who have already registered so make sure we are uh, around 3 weeks away from the conference so make sure you are registering for the conference and participating in the same so how to contribute uh, there are uh, all kinds of contributions that are welcomed you can you know add features bug fixes scrub issues documentation you can contribute to workflows or contribute a new experiment this is how you can get started with the litmus tool just make sure that you are joining the slack community and you are participating in uh, community meetings and other community initiatives and uh, here is how you can obviously take a look at the community check out the website join a litmus chaos on the kubernetes slack check out what's uh, latest happening in the community and obviously initiate your own responses as well so with this i think uh, we have come to the close of this talk uh, thank you so much i appreciate uh, whoever joined in and thanks once again for joining in if there are any questions i can take them later on thank you